In this video, I'm going to go ahead and create my red and blue virtual networks. So I'm in VM networks. I'm going to go ahead and say create VM network. I'm just going to call it blue virtual network. And again, for my logical network, I need to make sure I select the Hyper-V network virtualization PA space, whatever you called it. Basically a logical network that I enabled network virtualization for. I want to isolate using Hyper-V network virtualization. I'm going to use IPv4, both for the VM network and within the logical network. And now this is what is very different when creating the VM network for a network virtualized network. I now create additional VM subnets. So I can give it a name. Now I may just have one. So this could be blue virtual network, if I can spell, virtual network subnet. And I just give it whatever that subnet range is. So maybe this is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. But I could add additional ones. So maybe this is subnet one. And I may also want to add blue virtual network subnet two. And this is 192.168.11.0 slash 24. Now I don't have any gateways configured right now. So I don't have the option to configure a gateway to connect me to the internet or site to site or sort of NAT forwarding. But I can also come back and change this in the future. Again, I can do that view script. As always, I'm going to save that blue VM network and I hit save finish and so in that one I created two subnets you don't need to so on the next one I go ahead and create another one and I'm going to call this red virtual network I'm going to use high free network isolation again red virtual network subnet. And I'll still call it one, though I'm not planning to create another one. And remember, the IP addresses could overlap here. Now, I'm not going to do that just for... Actually, we will. We'll overlap these. So I'll say 192.168.10.0 as well. So remember, this is the same IP scheme that I specified for that blue virtual network subnet one. And when you decide on your IP schemes for your virtual networks, you do have a decision to make. So it may be you're just extending your corporate IP scheme into a virtual network, i.e. it would be fully routable and forwardable, in which case it's not gonna overlap any other IP schemes. Or I can say, well, these are tenant networks, they can bring your own IP scheme, so they are completely separate from the IP scheme used in the rest of the network, and maybe I'm gonna allow them to overlap. So I'm gonna let these overlap. I still have no gateways and finish. Obviously the difference here is and the potential challenge, if I'm using overlapping IP schemes, I'd never be able to, for example, enable just forwarding between the networks because how would it know which IP subnet to actually forward it to? But I can use network address translation to go and access external resources. Now, once I create these, the thing I do have to now do is also create an IP pool. Because I actually want to be able to give out these IP addresses to the VMs created in these virtual networks. So this is going to be blue subnet one IP pool. So that's subnet one. And it can have the entire range. Now, notice it does not have dot one. The reason is dot one is always reserved for the gateway, i.e. the virtual switch in this case. If I want to specify default gateway, so I'll actually just put in that 
168.10.1. I'm not going to specify any DNS at this point or wins. I just view this script. Save as BMM blue subnet one IP pool. Again, I can always change these later on. This is not set in stone. And then we'll go and repeat that and create one for the other subnet. So this time it's going to be subnet two. Again, that first IP address is always reserved. Again, I'm adding in the gateway because I'll potentially in the future, I'm gonna to wanna to do some routing on these. So that NAT, so I'm just gonna get these configured. Don't need any of that for right now. Finish. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly the same thing on my red virtual network. Notice this is the subnet I've left. VM network. Same again, the point one is always reserved for the gateway. I can add in my gateway that's been added. And remember, this doesn't physically exist. This is the virtual switch is going to handle this action of actually doing the routing for us. Again, I'm going to skip all this configuration for right now. Let's save this as my VMM. Red subnet pool. And finish. So now additionally, I have my red, my lab networks, my corp, which uses DHCP so it doesn't have an IP pool, and then my virtual networks. And I can see all the different jobs that have been running to all these configurations. And at this point, network virtualization is now ready. I can actually go ahead and create virtual machines and connect them to these virtual networks. So for example, if I go to a host, I can actually say create a virtual machine. I'm gonna use a template I've created. It's my 2012 R2 data center. And give it a name. So I'm going to go ahead and call this blue VM one. I'm going to accept all the defaults for the hardware configuration. Actually, didn't mean to do that. Let's skip back. For my network, I want to say connect to a VM network. I can say which network I want to connect to. So I'm going to say that blue network. And I'll say VM subnet one. to get a host in Dallas. It's now going to do a check of the hosts available and give me a rating as to why so they're both good fits. So I'll put it on 20 for now. Give it a name. I actually will go inside of this virtual machine. So this could be that blue VM1. A location for where I want this actually installed to. So I actually want it onto my cluster storage, into virtuals. Configure my subnet. I don't want to automatically start it, but if it shuts down, I do want to shut down the guest OS. I could view the script. OK, 
go ahead and create it. It's now going to create me that virtual machine. And I could repeat this and create multiple virtual machines across different subnets, across different virtual networks. And go and check on the jobs. As you see, that one failed. So interesting. So what I actually did here, it's actually telling me because I didn't create it as a highly available virtual machine, so I made a mistake when I was actually going through that config, it's saying I can't create it on a cluster path. So what I really should have done, I want to create virtual machine and repeat that steps for making sure I should do it as a clustered. So you can see I'm going through it again, but this time I need to make sure I make this highly available. So this is telling it to actually make this a clustered resource. This is the step I missed last time. Everything else will go through exactly the same as before. Give it the name. It's gonna check those utilizations again. I'm going to once again select 20. And this time you'll notice by default, it selected the cluster storage because now it understands it's a clustered resource. I want it to shut down. And I'm actually going to view and save that script is actually correct. <laughs> and create. And this time, I should see that VM actually get created. Again, I would repeat that. I'm going to create another VM in blue in subnet two, and they should be able to communicate because the switch will actually act as that gateway. And then I'll create one on red and that shouldn't be able to see each other. And I'm going to create these across different hosts. And you just repeat this and you now have network virtualization. So this completes this little video on actually just creating virtualized networks.